Now it's time for our science segment on the programme and today we're talking about water. It covers some two thirds of our planet and thanks to the rain from the skies, it does seem to renew eternally. That said, many places around the world today are facing water shortages or water stress. Take Mayotte, for example. The French Overseas Department is currently experiencing not just a shortage, but a drought. To discuss, Julia Seeger from our science desk is with me. And Julia, when we talk about water stress, what kind of water are we talking about? So it's an interesting question because indeed water distribution on Earth, you have 97% of salt water and you only have 2.5% of fresh water. What's interesting with fresh water, and that's what we're talking about today, is that it's constantly renewed through what we call the water cycle. We all know what that means with you know, the, um, the, the warmth of the sun is going to evaporate the water from the sea. That's going to create clouds. Then it's going to become rainfalls. It's going to go back down, infiltrate uh, the soil, and be stored in natural reservoirs. So maybe we can take a look at uh, that diagram there. So it has this life cycle, right? But what's interesting is that the quantity of water that you have in this cycle actually never changes. So the water is going to, uh, you know, go through the world in different states but the quantity of water will never change. What it is true, though, is that the rainfall uh, throughout the world is not evenly distributed. So you're going to have about 10 countries that are going to benefit from around 60% of all precipitations. And you're going to have many other countries, like you're seeing here in, in red, uh, in you know the Middle East or even Asia, that are going to face a lack of access to clean drinking water. What is true, though, is that the water cycle that we just saw is going to change as temperatures are going to rise because it's going to increase um, the, the, the evaporation is going to happen much faster. And so what that means is that it's going to create flash floods in certain areas of the world and droughts, of course, on other sides of the world. Because, as I said, in that cycle, you always have the same amount of water. And that is the case, Julia, in Mayotte, isn't it? Because this is the poorest department in France. It's in the Indian Ocean. It's facing one of the worst droughts in its history and unprecedented water stress. Exactly. So the water stress, what it actually means in simple words is that the available water resources that you have are beneath the demand. So what's happening in Mayotte is that they are they did experience a severe drought, the worst since 2017, clearly. And the problem of the island is that the water supply largely depends on rainfall specifically. Uh, the other problem is that there's a lack of investment, a lack of infrastructure as well, and especially considering the fact that it has a population growth of about 4%, which is huge every year, uh, and that's largely due to immigration. So the situation there is clearly critical, but it's really linked to a lack of investment. And other countries face water stress as well. We're not just talking about Mayotte, obviously, Julia. Um, what long-term solutions have countries come up with? Well, when you think about implementing a water management strategy, as I said, you need to have a holistic approach and look at the entire water cycle. So you need to look at water, uh, groundwater recharges, but also uh, wetland protections, uh, watershed mm -hmm. uh, management as well. You need to have more efficiency on the water use. So there you can use uh, technology, sensors, drones to have precision irrigation mainly in agriculture. Uh, you can also use these innovative technologies to track in real time what your resources are. And you can also, especially for places like Mayotte, invest in desalinization technologies. So that's when you turn seawater into, uh, into drinking water thanks to reverse osmosis. All right, Julia Seeger, our science editor. Thanks very much.